My name is Bo George, and, and that's not to be confused with Boy George of Culture Club. Um, I'm a principal consultant at Three Will, and um, there's a bunch of stuff where you can find me if you want to hunt me down. And uh, Three Will, we're a consulting company that we, we focus on collaborative solutions for, it seems like, ever since Groove. Groove wasn't owned by Microsoft, and when you used to have to customize SharePoint by editing ONET XML. So i um, been doing it for a while. And uh, so what I'm going to show you guys today is a question and answer SPFX solution we developed for a customer. We had to get their permission for me to demo, demonstrate it today. It's not open source yet, uh, but in the next week or two, hopefully we'll talk to them and get approval and, and make it available as a um, uh, open source project for everybody. So I don't have a lot of slides. This is really the last one before the demo. You know, the first question is really why build it? We all know Yammer now supports question and answers, um, but this was built kind of last summer. And, and the customer didn't want to utilize a multiple product, so Yammer for it and governing Yammer and, and the groups and all the membership and all that kind of stuff. And at the time, it didn't support Q&A and stuff like that. So, so Yammer wasn't an option for us at that time, but I, I realized that it could be for some now. Um, also, this customer was migrating from Jive. Anybody that knows Jive, they have spaces and groups and questions is a really popular content type in that where anybody – typically in the company can come ask a question and then the people who own a jive place or site could answer that question so that really fed into the mentality behind behind why they wanted this and so they have or you know they have more than this now but they had like 1500 site collections that we migrated and you wanted it to all be in one box right you want your question and answer data to live in sharepoint lists as a part of the site with the same permission structures sharepoint groups and all that kind of stuff and make it easy really easy to Provision, create sites that end users request, and deprovision, delete them when, when they're no longer needed. So, so those were a lot of the factors that went into why we did this. And kind of with that, I'll just switch over to a demonstration of what this is, which uh, I, I took the, um, the benefits uh, lookbook because that uh, benefits site's a really good scenario for where people ask a lot of questions. And the only thing that I've changed on it is put this uh, web part here. So it really doesn't take up a lot of space on a site. You can come in here as a normal end user and search for questions. So, you know, you just start with a, you know, a what phrase or a where phrase or anything like that. And your questions will filter. And this thing is already doing security trimming. So if the owner of the benefit site didn't want anybody in the world to ask a question or their visitors, they could turn off this button. But if they want to allow anybody, including end users, to ask a question, they can turn it on. And I'll show those properties in a minute. But really asking a question for, for an end user is just simple as clicking on the question and it launches to uh, another page. This is, an, is the same web part on an application page. And, you know, my questions always start with, what the heck is Bo demoing? And this is a rich text editor that at the time, I don't think uh, an SPFX control existed for it, or I didn't find one. So it's actually using Quill under the scenes, under the covers. And then it's styled with all the Office Fabric icons. So you can come in here and put, you know, a bulleted list of stuff. Um, and just kind of go down the line and, and do that sort of stuff. I actually had I, I turned off the ability to upload images, but we could support that as well. Um, but somebody could you know go and post their question, and what you'll see after I post is that I'm automatically following this question, so I'll be notified of replies to the question. Um, I can like my own questions, or other people could come in here and like it. Uh, when testing this, I talk to myself a lot, so I'd come in here and reply to a question. And just sort of start that thread going, you know, and you can reply to replies and all that sort of stuff. The threading goes basically as deep as you you would expect. Um, and then I could close this question. And now that I've launched to this page, it acts more like a, a spa type application where you close it and you can see a list of questions. Again, it's the same web part just configured in a different way. Um, so, I, you know, I have some fake users in here and... and um, you know, you notice some of the icons show that the question hasn't been answered yet, and then show, some have a check mark to show that it's answered. You can actually filter to open and answered and stuff like that in here. So I could, you know, if I'm if I'm a helpful person, I can say what's open out there that I could help out with, or you know, if I'm just looking to self serve, what's been answered. So this this Michael Jordan question um, is the one I kind of play around with. So you could click on a question and and just to kind of show you what the evolution might look like is. Um, you know, Michael Jordan's asking about his championship rings and how he gets coverage for him and different people. Will Holland has responded and you see when he responded and then, you know, I responded to him and you get that threading. And then at some point, 
you know, a question is answered. And so since Jordan asked the question, he has the ability to mark somebody else's answer as the one that is the answer. Myself, I am also a moderator of the questions, so I could mark it as an answer. Um, and that's as simple as, you know, clicking the question and I, I just unmarked it as an answer. So this is sort of what an unmarked scenario looks like or a marked scenario where um, myself or Jordan, since he asked, uh, marked it as an answer. Uh, again, um, anybody could come in and mark this as helpful um, or like things, so any end user can do that stuff. And then only the person who asked the question or a moderator, moderator could delete their question. Only the person who asked, uh, replied or um, replied to a question or the moderator could delete replies. Uh, so you see stuff like that. Um, and then if I go back to the list, I'll just show you some of the web part properties that are available. So on the application page, you know, it, it'll show like this instead of the other dialog. Most of these are kind of typical behavior modification ones, but the ones that I think are kind of interesting that I don't see quite as much are these things that I did for permission. So um, this is the toggle that uh, a site owner, so not an author, but a site owner could actually turn on and let visitors ask questions. Um, and that way, you know, it, an author could come in here and edit, and this is actually disabled for them because they don't have the permission to do that grant, um, but an owner does. So that's what this button would toggle is, you know, can anybody who's visiting my site ask questions? And in the case of our customer, most of these sites, our communication sites, opened up to tens of thousands of users, so that's who they're letting ask questions. And then this other button here is Manage Notification Group, and what this is is you do have your owners, visitors, and members typically, but those may not be the ones you want to moderate the questions. It may be a different group of people, a subset, or a cross-section, and so this allows us to say who are the people that need to be notified when new questions are asked or uh, tweak or, or uh, delete bad replies and all that sort of stuff. So these two areas are the things I'll show you a little bit in code about how we did that. The rest of this is just making the web part do different things, different sorts, and show and hide stuff. Um, so with that, I will get into code because that's why we're all here, right? So this is the solution, and I, I have a bunch of tabs opened up here that, that I'll just kind of walk through. So the, the package solution is pretty much your, your typical package. Um, but because this thing needs to be deployed to, you know, thousands of site collections kind of created on demand, um, I am using old school element XML files and schemas and stuff like that to provision the underlying lists. Um, and I actually had, you know, upgrade versions of this too. Um, but so the elements XML file for any of you that have been around a long time, you know, have the love hate relationship with this thing, lots of fields defined in there for all the different things I want to track. Um, and then I define two content types, so a question and a reply, and you'll see that a, a reply could actually have um, a collection of reply IDs and stuff like that and, and a question ID. And then, of course, the list instance, so this is the underlying question list that we, you know, we set hidden so nobody can just necessarily see it in site contents. And then that application page I'm talking about, so that's the elements XML file. Um, I really like the earlier demo about using hooks. Um, when I wrote this, I was sort of doing Redux for the first time. Uh, I come from an Angular background, and so I really love dependency injection in, in Angular, and I tried to do some of that sort of stuff here. So these are some of my services that do SharePoint typically operations, and I was using Redux and their middleware to inject them so that my actions and my components kind of had a single instance of a service to use to make data calls and things like that. Um, if there's time, I'll show the actions as well, but it's probably not not as special or, or unique to, to show. But uh, this is this was sort of me, me coming from an Angular world into a React world and, and trying to st still live the same life. So permission service, you know, you'll notice that I actually didn't inject that here because the only thing that uses it is the web part. So none of my children components use the permission service, um, but it really only has two methods that um, are important. And this can visitors ask questions. So you notice that toggle, you know, that web part might be on 10 different pages sometimes. And this, this, this is used by the web part to figure out what the toggle state should be. Should it show as letting visitors ask questions or not, right? So it's, it's a web part property, but it's dynamically updated by actual site settings. Um, so it just figures out, you know, get the visitors group, get the role bindings, find the visitor's role, and then say, tell me, hey, does that visitor's group have the ability to add list items? If they do, 
then that toggle is going to say true. If not, it's going to say false. So it's dynamically updated, updated anytime you open that, that panel. Um, and then this is the toggle, so only, um, like I said, site owners are the only ones that are actually have the ability to do this. But um, if it's already set to true, then I want to reset the role inheritance on that list because I want to turn it off. So I say, hey, I want, I want this questions list to have the same permission as the rest of the site, and that's what this reset does. Or if you're toggling the other way to say, hey, I want to let end users ask questions, then I need to figure out the contributor role. Um, let me find the associated visitors group to this site, and then I'm going to take those two things, and I'm going to break the inheritance from the uh, site itself, and I'm going to grant the group, uh, the visitor group, the ability to contribute to that list. So that's how that toggle works. How all of that stuff where I said moderators could add and delete, and the person who asked the question could do this, and the, and the person who replied could do that, all of that stuff is sort of managed through uh, what I figure out in the user service. So, you know, I just get the current user, and then I sort of prime my object with a whole bunch of falses that say, hey, they can't do anything. They can't add, delete, edit, whatever. Um, and then in this update permission information, this is the guy that really tells me everything else I need to know for that particular user. And so I figure out, you know, based on the effective permissions they have on that list, can they view items, can they add items, edit, delete, and so on, and stuff like can they add items that will influence whether or not they see that button on the on the screen because if they can't add items maybe only members and owners can maybe visitors can't so these sort of attributes tell me that sort of information um, and use that on the uh, screen so that's the two services that are sort of different since I have a couple more minutes left I'll just go through a few other things so like I said I use react so you see the patterns and I have shout outs one more slide about shout outs using connected dispatch and connected state. Love to switch this to uh, hooks at some point because this, all this boilerplate mapping state and props and all that kind of stuff became a little bit annoying. Um, but in here, this is kind of my default container. The one thing I wanted to show in here is that with Quill, you know, I was able to make it look as close as I could to SharePoint by overriding a lot of its styles with all the office fabric icons. So you get those things that look native and not like the typical bootstrap icons and all that kind of stuff that, that many of the other controls that are not SPFX controls have. So, uh, so that's how I did some of that stuff. And then just a word, you know, on, on the structure of this. So kind of over here on the left are all of my different components. So default container, his job is sort of like a little bit like a router in my angular mind to figure out if I should show a list of questions or a specific question or even an error. And then if you show a question, it's going to show, you know, it's replies and replies to replies and so on like that. So questions, reply list and reply kind of build a structure and a reply will in turn to a reply list and a reply. So there's a, a, a big component structure interaction there. And then, of course, question list and question. So, you know, all of those things work together. And then and that's where Redux and all of its stuff really was helpful because, you know, they all have their, their carved off properties and state and actions from, from the state uh, that's kind of all defined here, um, which this is a humongous file. But it's, you know, it's the business logic wrapper and the sort of workhorse around stuff like getting questions and doing things like setting up our order by, our filtering, you know, if I'm moving from page to page of questions and all that kind of stuff. So this this was really helpful to me, but I, I you know, I'm seeing the, the writing on the wall with hooks and, and certainly would start moving more to that direction and, um, you know, doing things that way. So, so that's the code in a nutshell. Happy to answer any questions on it, if there are any. So really cool stuff, Bill. Uh, and I and when I'm watching this code and everything, it, it's just just strike me as well. I'm just going to be open and transparent, which I have to be clear. And it's cool to see how awesome stuff people build with BMP JS and uh, the tooling and controls which we built together with community, uh, which really shows the power. Uh, so the basics and and the BMP JS as an example is a fundamental piece in in this one as well. Uh, one thing what I wanted to actually ask, uh, not about the code. Uh, is that um, uh, you had in your property pane, you had proper, uh, sorry, web part information, and it says version 1.0.3. I, I, I think I know the answer for this one, but I think it's actually good for the other ones to hear as well. So why do you have that? Why is, has that come to be useful? And it, yeah, I, th I think it's, you know, for, for me, this, this web part is deployed in the tenant-based app catalog and then made available on thousands of site collections. 
And every now and then, you know, when you're doing upgrades, you want to know kind of unequivocally, am I running the latest version of the code or the code that I would expect to be running? So that's really helpful yeah. without having to run those git pnp uh, app commands and all that kind of stuff where yep. you might you might have a mismatch between what's in the app catalog and what's actually deployed to your site so yeah yep absolutely makes sense so it, it's a nice small let's say make it easy for end user to actually have a look on that or you can your support can potentially say okay so can you double check that it's running the right version and they can easily see that uh, from the site level without any complexity so pretty cool so doesn't yep. that's really cool but i think uh, that's it for now so thank you for community shout outs um, yeah um, yeah so you, you mentioned community all none of this would be possible without all those people pmp provisioning schema for all that stuff PMPJS, the dev FX web parts, the React controls and Quill, and, and many more. So that's my shout out to all those people who I've learned from and built on. Yeah, thank you, Bo. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. I will steal the, the presentation because we're running on the hour. A really cool demo, uh, really great stuff. And, and hopefully it will be open source. Maybe it's not, who knows, but it's still really cool to say the thinking and the implementation behind of the scenes. And, and this is precisely what we also want to have within this course, because it's about sharing learning. It's about sharing what works and what doesn't and having a discussion on, on the different patterns, because that way we learn as a, as a group of people rather than individuals. So thank you both for that one.